Booming Thunder Radio. Where we groove as the spirit moves. Yeah. Drawing the honey from the rock. With the righteous Reverend Doctor on Booming Thunder Radio. Welcome, mighty friends. Ye, I trust you prayed upon your knees before the sun rose this morning, that you raised that cup in remembrance of the Sabbath day king. Ye, the spirit of truth within each of our hearts. Ye, that we broke the bread where the Father revealed to part the pages of wisdom. Ye, wisdom parted her pages unto us at page 1659. Mmm, what a sweet little tender morsel that those that came before us and gave so much that lay rest in the promise yeah, to rise again and be counted yeah, the everlasting now and forever in the earth, seen and unseen, ye that makes evil tremble, for they know their time is short. So let us look at what the strong man gave us, left us. Ye, our brother Thea. Ye, that one that stands by our side unseen in the earth. Ye, the legion of locusts with no leader. Do they devour all the earth and the evil within it? Each wave of the ocean more ravenous than the last. Ye, it's seven spirits more worse than the first would enter in if their house is left unkept. Ye, don't invite them back in. Don't make that mistake, mighty friend. Let us look at what our brother Thea, yeah, uh, the Thea definition of the Greek, yeah, to make free, to set at liberty from the dominion of sin. Yeah, this mystery religion, this mystery Babylon world we're born into. Ye, the sons must forgive the fathers for we, for what we have all inherited. For it is the honor of the son, even the prodigal son to come back home that each could forgive one another and that the rage of the eldest son could be quenched not by the blade of the sword of iron upon the earthen clay vessel but upon the circumcision of the heart by the blade of truth upon it. Yea, let us look at what the word study has to say.
for G1659. Free, to make free, liberate from the power and punishment of sin, the result of redemption. Yeah, we can see it in John 8.32. And you will know the truth. And the truth will make you free, brother. Yeah, John 8.88.36. 8, so if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. Romans 6.18 And having been freed from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Hallelujah. And Romans 6.22 But now, having been freed, yeah, having been freed from sin, and enslaved to God Almighty. You derive your benefit, do you hear? Resulting in sanctification of the name spoken from a sanctified heart, in the tabernacle of the mind. Yea, the outcome is everlasting glory, yea, eternal life. Yeah, from a state of calamity and death. Romans 8, 2. For the law of the spirit of life in the anointed Yahushua, yea, Christ Jesus, has set you free from the law of sin and of death. Romans 8, 21. That the Creation itself also will be set free from its slavery to corruption into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. Hallelujah. Yea, from the power of condemnation by the Mosaic law. Yea. From the power of condemnation of the Mosaic law. Galatians 5 and 1. It was for freedom that the anointing, yea, the anointed son, set us free. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to a yoke of slavery, mighty friend. Yea. We can go deeper into G1657, which is the root of the matter, which is freedom and liberty. Hallelujah. You can't make this stuff up. This is the spirit of everlasting moving before your very heart. May your blind eyes be opened. May the fire upon your heart Burn the wax from your ears that you may hear that your heart can be circumcised. Yea, that the Elijah ministry, yea, can begin upon your life. And you, mighty friend, can save your family. Yea, with the spirit of truth, the only one that can save us from ourselves. And only the Father can give it, ye, and receive it as a son. Is the Father when he is like wine in old age. Now the synonym is to deliver, to set free. To release from bondage. Yea, let this journey we take this day. This 
transfiguration in a moment of time. This, oh, let me be baptized. Oh, I was baptized. Let me get my feet washed and, yeah, burn the well red white linen. Yeah. The lamb skin dyed red, parted like the sea, thrown upon the altar in the temple just outside the tabernacle that is within you and within me, my dear friend. So if we cross over into the Hebrew mindset, and we are not prepared. What do we have, mighty friends, for Hebrew 1659 in the Word Study? Yea, the Complete Word Study Dictionary tells us a verb meaning to grope, to feel with the hand. It is used in a figurative sense of people groping along a wall in blindness because of their wickedness. Yea, Isaiah 59 and 10. We grope along the wall like blind men. We grope like those who have no eyes. We stumble at midday as in the twilight among those who are vigorous. Yea, we are like dead men. So did you see that? The group, H 1659. Yea, the old brown driver. The BDB definition. To feel with the hand, grope, stroke, and feel. Oh, pa, el, to grope, grope for, feel with the hand. Hmm, my dear friends, can you dig that? Yeah, I thought you could. Hallelujah. The ancient Hebrew lexicon Bible, yeah, its number is 1067-B. Yeah. And the root is a gimel and a shin. And its meaning is unknown. But when you add another shin, a gimel and two shins, it is apparently has the meaning of grope. But it's still uncertain. Um, again, there's another separation between the gimel and two shins, the groping, the pael group, and the root that has the vav, excuse me, the yod, uh, between them means clod, a dirt clod. Hmm. Hmm. Have you ever walked in East Texas after a summer rain when the ground is red where blood once ran upon it? A man in his cowboy boots will stand six, eight inches taller time he walks across a muddy field in East Texas. Yeah, all that black crude, all that blood upon the ground. Yeah, mighty friend, now that we have uh, prepared our hearts, yeah, with the spirit of truth, had wisdom open her pages, and he revealed himself unto 
us. Yea, to as one, he comes and reveals the truth unto us. Yea, mighty friends. The page 1659 opens to John chapter 4. And it talks about the woman by the well in Samaria. And you might not believe it, but you know, it's the truth. I forget how many years ago it was, a long time ago, seven, six, seven, eight, I don't know, long, many years ago. I had this first vision and I got this very same scripture that he gave me today in our fourth watch study together that I'm sharing with you now. So, we're using the eSword software on an iPad We're using the New American Standard Bible plus version. Has all of the strong number references so we can go back to the original Hebrew and where appropriate. And in these passages, the Greek where apparently is where it comes from. So this is the study mode. We have the King James plus version. So you can pause and uh, as we go and we'll highlight the, the verse we're on. And uh, at the bottom of the left hand side, it will change. Um, you can pause your, your watching and you can compare the numbers. So you can see right off the bat there that uh, 5613 and 3767 are switched differently in these two translations. So which one really came before the other, huh? Really got to start getting deeper in this Hebrew, the holy language. We're in Mystery Babylon. Never forget it, mighty friends. The only language that has not been corrupted by the Creator Himself is His holy language, Hebrew. You must distill those Hebrew letters to begin to receive the revelation beyond imagination. So let us kind of review where this whole thing started, the Glory Knowledge Foundation and the vision of TGBN.TV and all that we have been given this new place, uh, our green pasture all around us, tall yeah, cedars to a pair out front, yeah, just ripe for the eagle to come and take the top out of both of them, go do his work. Yeah. We got a little pond, yeah, full of duckweed. Yeah, we got chickens and we got rabbits and yeah, we got lots of tall, fat pine. But most of all, the Father gave us a a pool of still water for baptizing. Yeah, and washing the feet of those that recommit themselves, those that wash away the sins of Mystery Babylon, that believe and that were tricked into this world of Mystery Babylon, this bondage of sin. 
So let us see what the Sumerian woman has to do today in this world. Are you ready, my friend? Yeah, if you're out there chatting it up, I ain't looking at none of that stuff right now, but, uh, you know, tell me what you think if you're out there. I'll look at it. We'll get it the same. You know, this is kind of our maiden voyage in the new studio the Father gave us, and um, while we don't have it all up and running, we've got enough running. I thought I'd share this on this yeah, this double portion day, this day before the preparation day of the Sabbath. Yeah, that you could have these tender morsels and and the hope of glory and your oldest son's, oldest grandson's heart to read the Torah portion. Yeah, read a part of the Torah on the Sabbath day. Hallelujah, Yehoshua HaMashiach. Sing Deuteronomy 32. Yeah, one of the sixth parts. Sung each Sabbath day. Our, our brother Jake Grant is putting that together. Yeah, noob, N-O-O-B. Worship. Oh, it's really groovy. He's moving. A young man just married. Moving in the hope of glory. His wife loves, yea, the spirit of truth and dwells within both of them. And they are faithful one unto another. The commandments and themselves. Yea, may each of us be seen upon the hill, glowing, shining, rejoicing, worshiping. Yea, a little lamb dancing on the hill before the den of lions. Yea, let them lie down. Yea, let the wolves even be in their midst, but the straw be found in their teeth. So, Yehoshua, ye, mighty Jesus. Just to be clear as we go, my heart is for the Hebrew, Mashiach, the Messiah. Rev the one revealed in the living word and to us at the Elijah ministry. Yeah. Yehoshua. Yeah. That's our Sabbath day king. We knew Jesus. We went Fifty years in the Christian church and it broke our heart when we found the truth of beginning to study Hebrew and Latin and, and what these twisted hidden meanings were in this English translation and how the jackals of Egypt and Mystery Babylon cackle and laugh at the whole earth in their fortified places. Well, mighty friends, this world belongs to the Sabbath day king who created it through his faithfulness of the Father who is beyond any and all things we could ever imagine or ever hope for. So therefore, John 4 and 1, mighty friends, here we go. Then when 
Yahushua, ye the Sabbath day king, the one true God, ye the word come alive in a man's heart, ye heavens in the earth, teaching the children with each step and breath they take. He, this Lord, knew that the Pharisees had heard that Yehoshua was making and baptizing more disciples than John. Although Yehoshua himself was not baptizing, but his disciples were. He left Yehuda and went away and be again. He went back into the Galilee. And he had to pass through Samaria. Hmm. Do you know what Samaria means? G4540. A city in the region of Palestine, Samaria. Our brother Thea, Samaria in the Greek means guardianship. Hmm, isn't that interesting? The territory in Palestine, which Samaria as its capital, on the word study goes into great depth. Hey, I highly recommend the word study. You'll have to pay for it. But the ESOR program itself is free. Uh, this new American Standard Plus version that we're using is also a premium. you got to pay for that one, too. But it's, I think it's well worth it. Um, hard to go wrong with this combination, mighty friends. And um, the author, the creator of this electronic blade in the earth, has just released version 12. And uh, perhaps over the next few broadcasts, we'll have it installed uh, on all of our bushel basket loads. But this really kind of goes into Ahab. I mean, it's a Alexander the Great. You know, there's quite a bit. I, I really encourage you to get these resources. And when you come across a word that you're not really certain of, just click on it. Right? And you'll have all those things at your fingertips. So it came to a city of Samaria, a city of guardianship, and called Sakar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. So what is this Sakar, this G4965? It means a drunkard. Another name for the town of Shechem, a town in Samaria near the well of Jacob. Hmm. Sounds like some drunkenness was going on at the well. Perhaps a deeper study is in order there too, mighty friends. And Jacob's well was there, so Yehoshua, being wearied from his journey, was sitting thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. That's about noontime, I believe, mighty friends.
the Jewish reckoning noon, the first hour being six o'clock in the morning, the beginning of a working day. Now there came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Yehoshua said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Therefore the Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask me for a drink, since I am a Samaritan woman? Did you catch that, mighty friend? Jesus is not a Christian. Jesus is a Jew. This Samaritan woman was surprised that this Jewish man was even speaking to her, for it is forbidden in Jewish, yeah, rabbinic law. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Therefore, the Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask me for a drink, since I am a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Yehoshua answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. She said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get this living water? You are not greater than our father Jacob, are you? Who gave us this well and drank of it himself and his sons and his cattle? Yehoshua answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst, but the water that I will give him will be, yea, become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. Yehoshua HaMashiach, the Sabbath day king of glory. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so I will not be thirsty nor come all the way here to draw. He said to her, Go call your husband and and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Yehoshua said to her, You have correctly said, I have no husband. You have had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. This you have said truly. The woman said to him, Sir, 
I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Pay attention now, mighty friends, to the words of the Master Creator, the faithful one of the Father, the unknowable one by all except those that ye love the truth and have bowed their knee not to Baal, but to the Mashiach, the spirit of truth in the earth that reveals all things at the table of showbread, yea, that double portion on the Sabbath day. Hallelujah. Yehoshua said to her, Woman, believe me, an hour is coming when neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father, Mare Yehovah. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews, mighty friend. But an hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father and Spirit and Truth and such people the Father seeks to be his worshipers. Hallelujah. For the season of each brother, yea, like a tree in the springtime, and fruitfulness in the fall. Yea. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that he, the Mashiach, is coming. He who is called the anointed son, when that one comes, he will declare all things to us. Yehoshua HaMashiach, our Sabbath day king, the spirit, yea, of the father indwelling in a mortal man's heart, freely given, that he could be raised on the third day and send the spirit of truth, the helper, to reveal all things in the word. You must love the word, mighty friend, like a Hanukkah warrior, unseen in Silicon Valley, a blade of glory beyond imagination everlasting glory in the spiritual world where carnal children have been taught to go mad ye the digital ages their subliminal programming has done its work Stay with us, mighty friend, and we'll go through these deceptions that you can realize you are deceived by Mystery Babylon, and you must come out of it. Yehoshua said to her, 
I who speak to you am. At this point, his disciples came and they were amazed that he had been speaking with a woman. Yet no one said, What do you seek? Or why do you speak with her? So the woman left her water pot and went into the city and said to the men, not to the women, but he said, she said to the men, Come, see a man who told me all the things that I have done. This is not the anointed one, is it? They went out of the city and were coming to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples were saying to one another, no one brought him anything to eat. Did he? Yehoshua said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do not say there are yet four months and comes the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields that they are white for harvest. Already he who reaps is receiving wages and is gathering fruit for life eternal so that he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together right now. Overway, yea, you and the mighty one of Israel hidden inside your heart. For in this, in this case, the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap. Do you understand the honor of the reapers? I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Do you understand? Ye, Boaz and Ruth, ye, they were married and they understood. They brought, ye, the line of David into the earth. From that city, many of the Samaritans believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me all the things that I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to Yehoshua, they were asking him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days. A day is equal to a thousand years, and a thousand years with the everlasting Father is equal to yet a day. Yea, not too many more days from now 
all the brothers who have had the rude awakening, yeah, the teaching of our brother Michael revealing this truth. Dig deep, mighty friends. Nehemia, yeah, reveals the spirit of truth also. Yeah, like the rock on the west coast, Petro, raising calves. Yeah, oxen kicking down doors and stalls in Michael Lake. Yeah, the lake of fire in a man's heart. The wax gone, the circumcision sure. Yeah, the kingdom intelligence briefing dot com faithful and true him and his loving bride two thousand years are nearly over how many fingers do you have left do you count thumbs as fingers or are you eight days a week Many more believe because of his word. And they were saying to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves and know that this one is indeed the Savior of the world. After the two days he went forth from there into Galilee. For Yehoshua HaMashiach himself testified that a prophet has no honor in his own country. So when he came to Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did in Jerusalem at the feast. For they themselves also went to the feast. Seeing is believing for some. Some will never believe unless they see it for themselves. Yeah, there was Thomas, a disciple himself, who had to see to believe. Be wise in your faith. Yeah. Your glory knowledge foundation would be firmly established and unshakable. Therefore, he came again to Cana of Galilee. G2580, Cana, a place in Palestine. Cana means in Greek, our brother Thea says, it's the place of reeds. Hallelujah. Now I know why the Father wanted us to plant some reeds out by the duckweed in the pond out in the back by the swamp here in Louisiana. This place he gave us to baptize you all. Therefore, he came again to Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine. And there was a royal official whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Yehoshua HaMashiach had come out of 
Yehuda into Galilee, he went to him and, and was imploring him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. So Yehoshua said to him, Unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The royal official said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Yehoshua said to him, Go, your son lives. The man believed the word that Yehoshua spoke to him and started off. As he was now going down, his slaves met him, saying that his son was living. So he inquired of them the hour when he began to get better. Then they said to him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. So the father knew that at that hour in which Yehoshua said to him, Your son lives. And he himself believed. And his whole household this is again a second sign that Yehoshua performed when he had come out of Yehuda into Galilee. Yea, chapter 5. How y'all doing? You doing all right? You hanging in there? You need to go get you a little nibble or something? Hold you off? Yeah, you know. Sometimes. Yeah. You might think. But it's better to know. Yea, the healing at the pool on the Sabbath day. After these things, there was a feast of the Jews. And Yehoshua went up to Jerusalem. Yea, it's a feast of Yahovah. The Jews are those who worship the one true God. Now, there in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate, a pool, which is called in Hebrew, Bethsaida, having five porticos. Bethesda, in Hebrew, Bethesda, having five porticos. Porticos. In these lay a multitude of those who were sick, blind, lame, and withered, waiting for the moving of the waters. For an angel of Mariahova went down at certain seasons into the pool and stirred up the water. Whoever then first after the stirring up of the water, stepped in, was made well from whatever disease with which he was afflicted. A man was there who had been ill for thirty-eight years, my dear friend. When Yehoshua saw him lying there and knew that he had already been a long time, in that condition, he said to him, Do you wish to get well? 
The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool. Ye, when the water is stirred, When the water was stirred up, but while I am coming, another steps down before me. Yehoshua said to him, Get up, pick up your pallet, and walk. And immediately the man became well and picked up his pallet and began to walk. Now it was the Sabbath on that day. So the Jews were saying to the man who was cured, It is the Sabbath, and it is not permissible for you to carry your pallet. But he answered them, He who made me well was the one who said to me, Pick up your pallet and walk. They asked him, Who is this man who said to you, Pick up and walk? But the man who was healed did not know who it was, for Yehoshua had slipped away while there was a crowd in the place. Afterward, Yehoshua found him in the temple and said to him, Behold, you have become well. Do not sin any more. Do that nothing. Yes, yeah, so that Nothing worse happens to you. Behold, you have become well, so do not sin any more, so that nothing worse happens to you. You see, when you sin, the evil in men's hearts, the reprobate mind without God, he devour the innocence in the earth and so much more beyond perhaps many of you could bear right now. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Yehoshua who had made him well. For this reason the Jews were persecuting Yehoshua, because he was doing these things on the Sabbath day. You think they knew the one true God of glory when they persecuting the spirit of truth in the air for their wretchedness unseen their nine branches yeah. may the old poked out one be cut off castrated unseen But he answered them, My father is working until now, and I myself am working. Yehoshua is equal with God. For this reason, therefore the Jews, those who Worship the one true God, unknowable in part to them, for they deny the truth of Mashiach living in their hearts. For this reason, therefore, the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because he not only was breaking the Sabbath, but also was calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. 
the authority of the Son. Therefore, Yehoshua answered and was saying to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself unless something he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, these things the Son also does in like manner. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself is doing and will show him greater works than these so that you will marvel, mighty friend. For just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the Son also gives life to whom he wishes. Do you hear? For not even the Father judges any more, but he has given all judgment to the Son, so that all the honor the Son, even as they honor the Father, he who does not honor the Son, does not honor the Father who sent him. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and does not come into judgment, but has passed out of death into life. Truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For just as the Father has life in himself, even so he gave to the Son also to have life in in himself and he gave him authority to execute judgment because he is the son of man do not marvel at this do you hear be not led away into fables mighty friend for an hour is coming in which all who are in the tombs ye will hear his voice and will come forth those who did the good to a resurrection of life those who committed the evil to a resurrection of judgment a witness to Yehoshua Ah, brother Petro, with a word, y'all go check him out now. Forerunner Ministry. No. Forerunnerintl.com. Yeah, none of us can do anything of our own. But as we hear, we judge and our judgment is just. For we do not seek our own will, but the will of Yahovah who sent us. And if I alone testify about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who testifies of me, and I know that the testimony which he gives about Yahushua is true. You have sent to John, and he has testified to the truth. But the testimony which I receive is not from man, 
But I say these things so that you may be saved. Yeah, Yehoshua HaMashiach is the only one that can save you from yourself. He was the lamp that was burning and was shining and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But the testimony which I have is greater than the testimony of Johann and John for the works which the Father has given me to accomplish. The very works that I do testify about Yahushua HaMashiach that the Father has sent each one of us with this ye fire of truth in our hearts, the spirit of Elijah to make the way straight, to restore all things, first in our own ye Canaan land, taking down Jericho and finding the red ribbon thread. And the Father who sent me, yea, who sends each of us, he has testified of each of us, yea, and the one Yehoshua, that brought the living word into the earth, gave his life raised on the third day, a temple recreated before the eyes, walking forty days and forty nights in the earth, through the stonemason's walls beyond imagination. And the Father who sent us, who sent Yehoshua, who sends each of us in this age, in the image, not of the beast, but of the truth, liberty, and justice for all. He has testified, ye, of the spirit of truth, you have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form. You do not have his word abiding in you for you do not believe him who sent him. You do not believe him whom he sent. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. It is these that testify about Yahushua. And you are unwilling to come to Yahushua so that you may have life. I do not receive glory from men but I know you, that you do not have the love of God in yourselves. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, you will receive him. How can you believe when you receive glory from one another, and you do not seek the glory that is from the only one true God. Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. The one who accuses you is Moshe, in whom you have set your hope. For if you believed Moshe, you would believe me. 
for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe? Yea, my words, mighty friend. Yea, how indeed. Let us receive and a tender morsel yea from the builders yea we are the builders and we support our own we are coming together to restore first the wall yea that behind the wall once repaired, the tabernacle of our beloved king can be raised once more. And the third temple within each man's heart can be built with the wise master builder, that spirit of truth that moves in and out of the gate and doesn't climb up some other way to steal, kill, and destroy, do you hear? Yeah. So make sure to take the journey with us, mighty friend. Take the journey.us. Look in the description below there and check out the Glory Knowledge Foundation. All the, the things the Father has has had us build that you may learn and walk everlasting in the hope of glory. Hallelujah.